This is going to be a study on the Bible, a bloody book. And first we're going to look at the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And first we see about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that it is cleansing blood. Like this song says, have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? 1 John 1, 7 says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. His blood has the power to cleanse us of every sin, past, present, and future. And this happens the moment we believe on his name. After we are saved, it has the power to daily cleanse us of sin in the flesh. Some believe we get cleansing through the baptismal pool. Or that the blood is only applied when you are water baptized. But the blood is applied the moment you believe the gospel. His blood will purge my conscience. That means cleanse it and purify it. I need a daily self-judgment. I need to confess my sins. Not for salvation, but for fellowship. The blood of Jesus Christ will clean up my walk and my thought life. Hebrews 9.14 says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Revelation 1.5 And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. If you're not saved, then you have all of your sins still applied to your record. But if you come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner, then they will all come out in the wash. They will be gone and forgotten. We don't need some Catholic priest to get his forgiveness. We can go straight into the throne room. We have a great high priest that died for us, who's homely, holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, made higher than the heavens. We have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. As long as we have the blood, we can approach God. Hebrews 10, uh, 19, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Our mind can be warped from the sinful and dark things we have seen in this life. But the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse your mind of wicked things. Sometimes it's good to pray, Lord, wash my mind from all the wicked things I've seen. Maybe before you got saved, you watched wicked movies and listened to wicked music. Maybe your mind still plays those same ACDC songs and Eminem songs over and over again. Or maybe you have watched horror movies and those gruesome murder scenes flash in your mind. Or maybe you've played video games with blood and gore. Ask God for a cleansing of the mind by the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. But not only does the Bible call it a cleansing blood, it also calls it shed blood. Matthew twenty six twenty eight. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Jesus Christ willingly shed his blood to pay for our sin debt. He laid down his life for the sheep. He had power to lay it down and had power to take it up again. He volunteered to pay for the sins of mankind. Hebrews 9.22 says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Jesus Christ had to shed his blood. He's the only person that could be a perfect sacrifice for sin because he knew no sin. His blood is also redeeming blood. Hebrews 9.12 says, Neither by the, blood, by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Redeemed means to buy back. Acts 20.28 20, says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. I'm a purchased possession. 
My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I've been bought by a price. For this reason, I need to glorify God in my body and in my spirit, which are God's. I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. Why should I serve sin when I'm no longer the devil's child? I'm no longer owned by the God of this world. I'm now a child of the King because I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 1.14 And whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Ephesians 1 7, in whom we have redemption, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. And this blood also delivers us from wrath. 1 Thessalonians 1 10 says, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Romans 5 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. I don't have to face the wrath of God. When Jesus Christ shed his blood on Calvary, he took my place. God poured out the cup of wrath on the Lord Jesus Christ. Every sin ever committed was put on Jesus Christ. All of God, God's anger for these sins was dropped on the Lord Jesus Christ. And 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 1 Peter 2.24, Who his own self by our own sins in his body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Jesus Christ was my substitute, and he appeased the wrath of God. 1 John 2.2, 2, And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now that God sees the blood on my record, I'm saved from death. I'm not going to be have to cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. I'm saved from the horrible things that God was going to do to me. Just like when God saw the blood on the doorpost, he passed over his people in Egypt. Exodus 12:13 says, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt. Those Old Testament saints. Couldn't get their sins taken away. Because Jesus hadn't yet shed his blood. Those sacrifices they did. Couldn't by no means clear the guilty. But it could get them temporary forgiveness. Until they sinned again. Hebrews 10.4 says. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats. Should take away sins. They could get atonement with God through their sacrifices, but it isn't like the blood of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Leviticus 17.11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. The blood of Jesus Christ is my atonement. It made me at one with God. Notice you see, at one in the beginning of the word atonement. And that is why it is blood that makes peace. It makes you at one with God. Colossians 1.20 And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether there be things in earth or things in heaven. Sin was between me and God, but now that I have the blood, I am made nigh. That means we are close in fellowship. We are related by blood. I'm a son of God. Jesus is my kinfolk. We're related by blood. His blood put me in the family. And that's how I'm a child of the king. Ephesians 2.13 But now in Christ Jesus, you, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. But his blood is also overcoming blood. The only way I can overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil is by pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. When I feel persecution from principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places, I need to plead the blood. When this present evil world, ran by the God of this world, Satan, is pulling me down, then I need to plead the blood. Revelation 12:11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. But not only is the blood of Jesus Christ in the Bible, 
And the Bible is a bloody book that talks about talks a lot about blood, but it also talks about the blood of martyrs. That's people who have died and shed their blood, had their blood shed by wicked men because they love Jesus Christ and they love God. They had their blood shed and will have their blood shed for keeping the word. And the tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, Revelation chapter 6 and verse 9, it says, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. These men in the time of Jacob's trouble, they're going to have their heads cut off and their blood is going to run under the altar. The Antichrist is going to have a religious worship service and he's going to sacrifice God's people. Men hate God, so therefore they hate the words of God. They hate a man that has the high praises of God in his mouth and a two-edged sword in his hand. The Catholic Church is drunken with the blood of the saints. They hate the book. They hold the truth of God in unrighteousness because the Pope is their final authority. But he is no final authority. The King James Bible is the final authority. But men love to reject the Bible because they don't want to answer to nobody but their self. But that Roman Catholic Church is the great whore, Mystery Babylon. Revelation 17, 6 talks about Mystery Babylon and it says, I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. I don't hate anybody, and I don't believe I'm better than anybody. But the sodomites and lesbians would love it if every Bible believer had his blood shed. And when I say Bible believer, I mean somebody that keeps God's word and believes what it says and doesn't change it. I'm talking about a Bible believer that believes Leviticus 18.22 that says, Thou shalt not, not lie with mankind as with womankind, it is an abomination. Christians have got killed for their intolerance. A tolerant Christian can become friends with the world and not face a martyr's death because a, to an, a tolerant Christian can be accepted by the world, but an intolerant Christian is who the world hates. And one day we're going to be killed in this country for being intolerant. They already want us dead. The Bible talks about Antipas, Antipas, the faithful martyr in the book of Revelation, he was slain where Satan dwelleth. His name means against everything. I've also heard it means anti-peace. And everyone is all about peace. In the tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, the Antichrist will come in peaceably. And that's why his name probably means, one of the meanings is anti-peace. The devil deceives because he comes in peaceably. But then he destroys. They hate a Christian like Antipas who is against everything. The two witnesses in the time of Jacob's trouble will be slain in the streets. They'll be beheaded. And this world doesn't like truth to be yelled out in the streets. They don't like to be convicted of sin when they go in the store and buy alcohol and strip joints. And they go in bars and strip joints. They don't like to be convicted when they are at gay pride parades. The Bible says, What fruit have ye in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? There is something wrong with the Christian who isn't ashamed of his sin. But Christians who are in sin most times don't like to hear hard preaching from the Bible, like the two witnesses will do in the time of Jacob's trouble. Not only this, but there is blood at the second coming. There's not just the blood of martyrs and the blood of Jesus, but there's blood at the second coming. I talk so much about the second coming because it is my favorite part of the Bible and it is the main theme of the Bible. Revelation 14 20 says and the wine press was trodden without the city and the blood, blood came out of the wine press even into the horse bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. There is going to be a river 200 miles long of blood. Jesus Christ has to come shed the blood of all the hands that shed innocent blood. There will be no more babies killed by bloody men who shouldn't live out half their days. Men who produce blood and gore movies will get to live out those movies. Only they will be on the receiving end of the violence. In Noah's day, the earth was filled with violence. 
And the end of days will be as it were in the days of Noah. Men love violence, so Jesus Christ comes back as the line of the tribe of Judah instead of the Lamb. He comes back as a thief in the night. Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. The book of Joel said they shall enter in the windows like a thief. God isn't going to destroy the earth with a flood again, but I bet that men will drown in their own blood. There's going to be a flood of human blood. The saints will rejoice over the vengeance of God. I know you don't think that sounds Christian, but God can't bring in the kingdom without getting rid of hands that shed innocent blood and the men who worship the beast and his image and all the bloody workers of iniquity who shed the innocent blood of God's people. Revelation 16 says, And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Psalms 58.10, The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. He's going to be clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. The Bible says, Who is he that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? His, his garments are going to be dyed red in blood. The God-haters are going to be trampled under the feet of the horses like a man stomping on grapes. And if you don't want to be on the receiving end of a death like this, then you need to come to Jesus Christ, the one who shed his blood for your sins. The gospel is given in 1 Corinthians 15. The Apostle Paul describes about how Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures and that He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. If you want to be saved, then you need to believe that gospel. If you want to die and go to hell, then you need to reject that gospel. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why Jesus had to die for you because you're a sinner. That's why you need a Savior. The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. Don't think that you can go to heaven by your own righteousness. Because the Bible says, talks about people going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Your self-righteousness will take you to hell. You need to turn from your own self-righteousness and turn to Jesus Christ and His righteousness. You get His righteousness applied to your record when you believe the gospel. You put your trust in what Jesus did on the cross as payment for your sins. And that's the only way you can get to heaven. The Bible says in Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The Bible says in Romans 10, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you want to be saved, come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner. Quit relying on your own self-righteous good deeds that you do and put your trust in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross.